Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details. And you may not be able to see it. It's snowing. It is November 8th, I think. It's Friday. But uh, we weren't necessarily calling for a whole lot of snow. They probably even said it would just be north of us. And it's here. So my kids are probably freaking out, but no, Charlie, we're not going to have a snow day. You still have to go to school. But I want to talk to you, the professional detailer, about how to detail in the cold. So let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, you have to protect yourself. So obviously we want to encourage wearing gloves, period. I don't always, especially in the summertime, I am a sweater. And sometimes when I wear gloves in the summertime, I just end up with like puddles of water running down my hand and then it drips inside the customer's car and it's gross. So there are a lot of times that I don't wear gloves in the summertime, but in the winter, I wear gloves. One, protect yourself from chemicals, and two, they actually do a decent job of keeping your fingers warm. There's nothing worse than having cold, cracked skin and vacuuming and you hit some piece of metal and you bust a knuckle open. My knuckles take a toll in the winter time. So I, every night, will make sure I put lotion on my hands that I try to protect them as best as I can because it hurts after a while when you've got cold hands, especially if you're having to go in water. And when we wash in the winter time, now I'm only doing an interior on this car behind me. I actually did the exterior yesterday because I knew we were gonna have 30, 40 degree temperatures today. Waxes kind of stop going on properly at around 40, 45 degrees. So once you get below that 40 degree mark, I wouldn't rec you know recommend putting on waxes even if you have if you have a garage that's heated you should be fine um, if you have a garage that's not heated I would say I've worked in a garage before that wasn't heated it was insulated so what I ended up doing was getting like a propane gas tank heater or like a energy efficient heater something that's portable putting it in there letting it run for a while till the temperature raised to about the 50 degree mark and then I've even done ceramic coatings that way in the winter time. But you have to make sure that you have at least above 40, 45 degrees for applying waxes. Below that, I would say, you know, it's not gonna bond properly. There's gonna be some issues with the wax um, just not coming off the way that it is designed to be. But when it comes to protecting yourself, obviously, you know, I'm representing Go Eagles, but I'm also a Steelers fan. I'm from Pittsburgh, so don't hate. But anyways, so obviously I have sweaters, I have sweatpants on, I also have insulated boots. I actually coated the leather part with IGL leather so that way they are waterproof. You don't have to go to that degree, but I did because I'll wash cars in them. And they're nicer and I want to kind of keep them looking that way. But I don't wear a lot of jeans. I don't wear jeans actually at all when detailing because one, the material might be too coarse if you're rubbing up against the paint. Uh, there's also kind of those brass fixtures on them or belt um, buttons or things like that that, that they could abrade the paint. So I pretty much dress like a slob every time that I detail. I am always that mom at preschool pickup that just looks like I rolled out of bed, but it's because I'm dressed for work. So I love it because I don't have to dress up for my job. I don't have to put makeup on and what you see is what you get with me. But anyways, so obviously dress warm you don't not necessarily need to have you know huge jackets no mind you i'm in 30 40 degrees weather i'm i'm gonna be moving a lot and sweating so i don't necessarily need thick gear on but if you want to wear weather a waterproof jacket waterproof pants if you're doing a lot of washing knock yourself out dress warm you can even wear insulated pants thermals things like that wear layers it's better to be warm than to be cold, especially when you're working with water. So I know I'm kind of preaching, this is the mom and me kind of coming out. But what I will actually do, so these nitrile gloves are great when you're doing interiors, but when you're washing cars, sometimes you th need something a little bit more durable. So I'll actually get kitchen gloves, the yellow ones that have the longer cuffs on them that kind of come up to your mid, mid arm. They are for the most part lined and they are water resistant, I would say, until you get a hole in them. But what I will do is wear nitrile gloves and then put those yellow kitchen gloves that are kind of water resistant over top and I will use those to wash vehicles. Some people will spend, you know, 10, 20, 40, 50 dollars 
on waterproof gloves. If you want to go that route, that's fine. I'm always looking for the cheapest option. So check out those kitchen yellow gloves. I'll try to find what I'm talking about and put the link down below. I don't have any on hand right now because like I said, I'm just doing the interior. But when it comes to winter, protect yourself, dress warm, protect your hands, ears. You don't want to get sick doing this as a living because then you can't work because you're sick. So next, let's kind of talk about actually doing the cars. So when it comes to doing cars, like I said, I already did this one uh, yesterday. I did a quick rinse. My pressure washer actually stopped working yesterday. It was broken a while back ago and then it started miraculously working again and then it broke yesterday. I think it got too cold and it just died on me. So I had to do the old fashioned way with the hose, a bucket. I actually used, I got a, a Marilex foam sprayer to try out from Luxury Microfiber. Absolutely love it. That is going to be my saving grace in the winter time because I can still film a vehicle with the pump, the foam sprayer and be able to put my, my road film soak on it. And then if you wanted to, what I would recommend for winter time when you're washing a car is do a rinseless wash. So you can use something like O&R, ADG Wipeout, McKee 37N914. There, uh, even Lloyd Snell has a new um, waterless wash. You want to kind of get creative. If you've got a lot of salt on the vehicle, what I would recommend first, take it through a touchless car wash or even go to the cheap bays where you can just use the wand, pressure wash it off, knock off the big stuff, then come home. Either if you don't have a garage or if you do have a garage, then do your rinseless wash. You can use warm water in your bucket. That'll save your hands from getting cracked and it will also prevent your water from freezing. There are times that you kind of have to just work fast and get creative. So go to the touchless bays or you know the quick bays that you can just kind of use the wand. Don't use the brushes. Rinse your car off, come home, then do the rinseless wash. Or if you just take the supplies with you to the car wash, some will do that too. They'll take their rinseless wash to the car wash. I prefer not to because people are waiting to use the next bay. So that's how I would, you know, do the exterior. You can use something like the um, Optimum has a wash and wax that has some wax in the rinseless. You can also use um, something like a Duragloss Aqua Wax or even Meguiar's Express Spray Wax as a, or even uh, Optimum Spray Wax. I think I said that one already. I'm just trying to think of, of quick spray waxes. Optimum, Opti Seal, something to be a drying aid in case there's, you know, any bit of road film, but it's going to help with drying and it's also going to put protection down. That would pretty much be the max protection that I would say you're going to be looking to get in the wintertime unless you've waxed it beforehand, which is what I recommend to all my customers. Get a quality wax on before winter and then during the winter maintain with a spray wax for as a drying aid and also just to kind of boost whatever protection you have on there. This one I just did, like I said, I did my um, Rage pre-foam silk with the pre-foam soak with the Marilex pump sprayer, foam sprayer, and then I rinsed it and then I washed it with Superior Products Dirt Buster. I did a clay job with a clay wash mitt and washed it and clayed it at the same time. And then I polished this with 3D1 and a white polishing pad. Hondas have super soft paint. I actually, anything more than white was leaving ghosting effects. So I just used uh, a white polishing pad with 3D1. There were a ton of scratches. They had driven by twigs all on this side. There were, it looks like they had washed uh, this panel with a Brillo pad and there were just various dings and dents and things like that and you can see the 3d one did a fantastic job and then because it was in around in the 40 degree mark i ended up using g technique c2 v3 easiest ceramic sealant i have ever used i am in freaking love with that stuff but you can just see this vehicle looks fantastic we still have to do the trim and tires so no judgment but everything came out really well despite being 40 degrees so i apologize i don't have any footage to show you that but I'm sharing with you my products, tip, you know, how, what I used. And you can see, even in 40 degree weather, I could see my breath last night. We still got great results. So, when it comes to interiors, let's talk about that. All right, so interiors, I'm going to try to make this quick. But essentially, if you have an interior that looks like this, that the seats are soiled, you have some spots where you need to do shampooing. What I'm going to recommend, obviously, you can vacuum in any temperature. It doesn't matter. So, we're going to do our vacuum first. But when it comes to stains 
in seats and carpets, what I'm going to recommend is that you use steam. Steam is going to be your best friend in the winter. A lot of people just use steam. They don't have an extractor. It's a great option if you don't have an extractor to still deep clean. You can, you know, sanitize all of your surfaces. You can knock dirt. If you have things in your cup holders, you can use the steam to kind of knock it out and use the force of the steam to push it out. You can use door jam or use steam to clean your door jams out. Really, there's not a surface in your vehicle that steam isn't going to benefit it. The only thing that I say with steam, when you have leathers and when you have plastic, you want to be very careful that you are moving quickly and you don't have the steam too close. One, it will burn it and melt it, and two, it can pull the dyes to the surface and actually kind of bleach the plastics or the, the vinyl on your interior. So you need to have a quick light touch, but you can use steam safely, especially like air vents, steering wheels, anything that you need to sanitize. Steam is going to be your best friend. And in my situation today, it is going to be my best friend because two, it will help keep me warm because I can just close the door and work on one side and let the steam kind of get it a little bit warmer. But when you're doing interiors, make sure your customer is okay with it. But turn the vehicle on and turn the heat on. If you're cleaning stuff on the interior, think, you know, be smart. Turn the heat on and, and why work cold when you can work warm? So essentially that is how I would approach an interior vacuum, steam. You can still use your chemicals. You just have to make sure that, you know, you're not like freezing cold outside because then you're going to have issues. You can use the steam even to do your windows. If you have something like a waffle weave flip towel or if you have like this is the roman from luxury microfiber or if you have the pearl microfibers you can use steam you know to kind of do your windows if you're concerned about them um, freezing up on you if it's that cold so next let's talk about how to store your products so here you see over here i am working out of a carport so i don't really have the luxury um, the years past, I haven't had the luxury of a insulated or, or, you know, heated workspace. So what I have to do every winter, once it kind of gets to below freezing, you can see these are all my chemicals here. These aren't actually all my chemicals. <laughs> this is just a very small portion of the chemicals that I have. I have a problem. I have a big problem. My husband is like freaking out the fact that I have to move all of this stuff because in about three weeks, three weeks guys we're gonna have a two-car garage and eventually it will be heated because my husband is awesome he does hvac and he's gonna put a mini split in it for me so i can have heated garage but you can see this is pretty much the space that i have stored all of my stuff in i don't mow but this is my daughter's mower but these are all of my microfibers anywhere from interiors polishing and then just kind of special ones microfibers my wash mitts my drying towels my seats to polish on, my Aqua Pro Vac. I have my step stool, I absolutely love it. I have all of my, don't, it's kind of crazy right now, we're getting ready to move, so I've just been throwing stuff, but these are all my excess brushes that I don't need, but in case I do, all of my polishing pads, my three inch, two inch, one inch polishing pads, tripods, business cards, extension cords, X blower, uh, this is for my Cord, uh, corded or cordless drill all the components and then all of my polishers down here with my light and then my buckets that I put for washing so you can see I don't have a lot of space I make use of the space that I have but I obviously don't have it insulated so I have to take all of these chemicals here downstairs and in fact I would recommend that you take your pressure washer and even your extractor downstairs because in case there's any sort of water and any of the electrical components it can freeze and do damage so that's got to go downstairs even pump sprayers things like that once things kind of freeze they don't work as they should so if it's something like a drill or your polishers microfibers things like that they i think would be fine to keep outside but even if you have clay clay towels i would say get those downstairs because you don't want them to freeze so this has kind of been a little bit all over the place, but I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, how I approach detailing in the wintertime. From how you dress yourself, how to kind of work in the cold, and then how to take care of your products and chemicals. Obviously, I have my polishing pads and hopefully they don't freeze, but 
Anyways, um, if any of you have any questions, comments, or tips that you find work for detailing in some, you know, winter time, by all means, please put the comments down below. I want, I'm, you know, I didn't necessarily touch on every situation, um, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, extreme cold. I'll probably do a video in the future of how I would wash a car in the winter so you can kind of see that. I did kind of, you know, explain it, but I want to give you the visual for how to protect and wash your car in the winter time. But thanks guys for watching. I'm gonna get going on this detail because it looks like there might be a little bit more snow on the way and my hands are getting cold from having them so high. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I have two more details this coming week and then I'm actually closed for a few weeks because we've got to get ready to move. So this may be my last video for just a little while. I may, like I said, do one in the future showing you how I would wash this in the winter time. But the next video that you see, it may be in my new house, in my new garage. So I'm excited to show you guys and uh, all of that setup. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got some fun stuff planned in the future once we get into the new space. We'll see you guys later.